is made. This video here is going to be showing you guys how to make the sheets for the actual project. So again, we go new. We're still going to go in the same project, Ohan Coupling. We're still in the same family. That's why we made that project folder. Everything is organized. It's very hard for you to lose anything if you follow the step I showed you four videos ago or yesterday or even today. So we go back now and we go click on standard IDW. Create. It opens this up again. If you notice, it keeps your name. It tells you the date you completed it and also gives you the paper size we are working on. This size is way too big. So how do we fix it? We could do right click and we go to edit sheet. In edit sheet, you have the sheet name. So in this one here, I could call it, for example, cover page. This is me doing it. I could call it a cover page. The size, 22 by 34 is way too big. So we could actually see if size B, which is 11 by 17, which is the longer paper, which is okay because we're not actually printing it. We're just going to save it as PDF. So it's a good size. If we want to put our thing in landscape or portrait, we could change it here as well. In our case, we're going to keep it in landscape. We're going to say exclude from printing. No, we want this to print. Exclude from the count. No, we want it to be as a page number that we're using. For the cover page, technically, we could actually say exclude from count so that on the next page, it will say 1 of 5, 1 of 6, uh, sorry, 2 of 6, 2 of 5, 3 of 5, 4 of 5, and so forth. So we, we chose our paper size. Revision, we have none. So technically, you could put 0 there because there's no revisions. But if you do finish a project and you have someone review it and they do correct it, that's when it's important to put revisions so you know that where you're at. Press OK. And now you notice we have size B. So it's good. If I want to change my name here, where it says drawn by R. Romano, I could go File, Options, and I could change it right over here under General. I could actually make it so it says Delete R. Romano. So it's more clean. Apply. I could put all capital letters, whatever you want. And it should automatically change it on the next one. I don't know why I didn't update. Edit Sheet. Okay, new sheet. Did I not press OK? Okay, we're going to go back to that and fix it. I don't know why it didn't update. It should have updated by now. I think it's in the properties of the I properties. Summary is right over here. So let me go put back. So in the I properties, see, it adjusted it now. It's going to press, it's going to update it. And unlike AutoCAD, whatever you do in the I properties, it's going to show up on every single page. So it's going to fix it for you. So if I go back and I change the title name, so if I go back to my cover page again, I properties, and I go say summary, and it says title. Here I could call it old ham coupling. Press apply. Should be right here when I press OK. There's my title. Understand? Drawing name, we're going to change it. We can change it also. That whatever drawing you bring in, it's going to name it. That's why it's important to have the correct naming convention when you're naming the parts. Don't just call it part one, part two, part three, and then rename it after because you're going to have issues later on. So in this case here now, I'm going to go for my cover page and I'm going to go show you the base. I'm going to go do select and I'm going to go choose the old hand coupling. I want the whole piece. I press open. And I'm going to change my view. See, if I go on the cube, I could change my orientation of my drawing. So I could do this as my cover page. I could change the scale. I could put it one to one. And I could press OK. See, I could have this view here as my cover page. Is there anything wrong with it? No. I could leave like this. I could go back here. I could edit the view. Right click. And I should have an option that says Edit View. And in here, I can make it look solid. Apply. And now it's a solid piece. We understand there's the fillet we built before. Any issues so far? No, we shouldn't have any. On my cover page, if I don't want it to show me this table, I could technically go back here to the cover page, go to the title block, and I could say Delete. And I don't have a title there, which is okay because it's my cover page. I could have this placed nicely like this. Then I could go back to annotate and do text. I could put underneath here, I could put 
Did I do text? Where'd it go? Right here? My computer's a little bit slow right now. Oh, it's on this side. It's on my other screen here. Here I could put Roberto, your name afterwards, Romano. You could put the date, so it would be 2021-2019. Okay? You could put you could put the date of uh, the course, so course name, which is C06, I think it's 241, C06HE. Like that, you could do the, the kind of information like this, press OK, and you have your name here. You could call it the project name. I could go back over here, double click on it, and start off with bigger text. Two. Go here and put here um, old. Oops, it's huge, but let's see how it looks. Old ham couple. This is way too blind. This is way too big. As you can tell, I'm not blind, guys. So maybe this is too big. So let's go make it down to one. I mean, this is too big. Let's go 0.5. I have to select the text that I want it to shrink. 0.25. Okay, and I can make sure that I have the actual cup, the name over here, Oham. I can make sure that I have it centered, and I can grab this box here that I made earlier, make it smaller so it actually fits within the square I want, and I can move it back into its place. We see what I did here? We added our nice little cover page with your name with the course number, Olham Project. That's for my cover page. If I go here, cover page. If I don't want to have these grids going around also, I could go to default border and delete it as well. So all I have here is nothing. It's just the cover that I want. We understand? If I want to add, re-add the border around it again, I go back to drawing resources, and I click on border, and I double click on default. It re-adds it again. If I want to put back my title block, I go back to uh, drawing resources, go on title block and click on, is it a big title block or small? In this case we're going to use the normal size and it's right there back where I had it before. So you could remove it depending on what page you're working on and you could re-add it. You can make your own as well. So for my cover page I don't want it so I'm going to go back here and delete this. If I want I can leave this the border around or again I'll just delete it just to show you. That's my first page. Was it hard? No. Then I could go back, go to, this is page one. Now I'm going to go to, this is my actual page. You notice? Now it says one. Why? Because on the other one, if I did edit sheet, I did exclude from the count. Because I don't need my cover page to have a number. Now on this page here, I could rename it. So I go to edit sheet. This one here is going to be my first piece. So what's my first piece going to be? It's the, what piece did we build first? It's the exploded view. Thank you for answering. So we, I, this is to be the exploded view. Exploded view, we will put it. Okay? I know, but now I had a point. I forgot about the exploded view. So we could do the exploded view, and also we could do the sub-assembly right beside it as well. B, again, it's all good. We want it in the count. We press OK. Go back to place view, base, search it, and go look for exploded view. Press open. Okay? And now I could change the scale. If I wanted 1 to 4, or if I go 1 to 2, I have my scale set up nicely for me. There's my exploded view that we worked on before. I could also, if I want to make it a little bit more cool, I could add another one. Click here. Go back to the original one we had before. Open it. Do the same orientation. And put this as well over here. Oops, I closed it. I could do this as well, where you see it, how it looks closed, edit the view again, make it a solid. This is the shaded, this is shaded. So I can have it like this, I have one closed, one exploded. Alright, any questions so far about this? No, it's so far it's still simple. Now if I want to do the ballooning and the table, I could do that as well. I could go do balloon auto balloon if I want to do a cheap way. Auto balloon. 
it's not cheap, it's just a little bit faster. I can select all the views. So I go select this whole view. And I'm going to say parts only. Why am I going to do parts only? Because we did sub-assemblies. If I would have did structure, it would do sub-assembly and then parts. In some cases, it's good where you have sub-assembly, the parts list, and then you have individually. In our case, we want them all individually. So I'm going to do parts only. I'm gonna, I want them as numbers. And number of digits, I'm going to put two. So it would be 0, 1, 0, 2, 0, 3, 0, 4. OK? That's OK. Now I'm going to do, I have everything I want. I'm going to select all my components, like so. And I'm going to do select placement. See, right now I have four balloons. Is that correct? Yes, I have four. So I could have it go around the drawing. See how it goes around? Horizontal to each other or vertical to each other. You decide which one you want to do. I clicked auto balloon. So it's going to choose whichever one it feels like. I click, and like that, it chose one piece, two piece, three piece, uh, one piece, two, three, three, and four. It chose all the pieces. I press OK. Yes. And now you notice it goes 0, 3, 0, 2, 0, 1, 0, 4. It did it actually in a, in a good order, actually. It, it followed itself. So now I have my balloons. The next thing to do is add my parts list. Click on parts list. Select the view, this view here. Again, I press to the left or to the right, whichever way I want. I'll, I'll do it to the right. Press OK. And I will click it right over here. And I have my parts list with my names and everything correct. Now, is this, is this correct how I have the table? No, it's going in the opposite direction. If this table here was placed in this corner, it was perfect. So we have to flip it. So we're going to go here and go to Edit Parts List. And we're going to use, uh, where is it? Column Chooser. If I flip it, that's a sorting. There's a way where we could flip it. I think it's under Table Layout. So again, I went to right click, Edit Parts List, right? Then I went to this one here where it says Table Layout, which brought us to the options. And then afterwards, then afterwards, we went and we flipped it from the top to the bottom, like so. And we want also to flip the orientation. We press OK. OK. And now you notice it goes 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. Disk. I spelled flange wrong again, apparently. Shaft. And the key. We see that. All right. And we have a description. There's also a way to remove, to modify the table. If I go back again and I say edit parts list, and I don't want to see description, I could say uh, group settings. What is it? Uh, not that. This one. Group chooser. And I can remove description from the list. And I have parts list, quantity, that. I could also go back to the table like I did before. Edit parts list. I want to add a new one. Chooser. And I could see if they have material. Material, I can add it back in, press OK, close, and now I have my material set. Why does it say generic? Because we never chose a material when we were building the actual piece. Now this table should be able to move, but it's being a little bit of a... You look for that piece there and you lock it into the corner. Okay, you can make this table smaller. Oops, that's a little too small. All right, so now we have our tables with our number set, our quantity. See, there's one of this, two of those. Why? Because we have only one disk, two flanges with an R apparently, and two shafts, two keys. Any issues so far of how I've done? Has it been hard? Right now we have our cover page. We have our exploded view. We're going to add our new sheet now. We go right click, new sheet. So now we're going to go rename this one, edit sheet. We're going to call it what? What was the first piece we built? It was the flat. It was the this. So that's our, is that the same order we saw before? Was that number one? Yes. So we try to make sure whatever number one was here, we follow the same order. So if it goes disk, flange, shaft, key, in your order of the drawings should be the same way. You should staple it the same way. Don't staple it any random way. Don't make PDFs any random way. So now I go back to the disk. 
And we do the same concept. Place view, base, search. I go to the disk and I press open. See, this is the view. If I don't like this view first, I can rotate the view to the one that I want to be my front view. In this case here, I'm okay with this as being my front view. I can place it. I click and drag over here. One view, two views, three views, four views. I press enter. Okay, and now I have my four views. I can go to my auxiliary view here, right click, edit, and I can make it so this one here is a solid. So you could tell that it's different from the rest. For these ones here, I can make them hidden if I wanted to. I could go back to one, two, three, right click, edit view. I do one at a time, I guess, edit view. And I could say I want to see the hidden lines for these guys. See? Hidden line. Go back, edit view. I don't know why they're on all copy. They should all be copying each other. There's no hidden lines, I guess, here and none here. So we see we have our pieces. Next, what we can do is we're going to annotate. Dimensions, like we've done before, grab here. We have our dimensions that we did before. This is a radius. Is this correct? No. So what we can do is we could go and retrieve our dimensions. Oops. So if I click on this view, right click, and I go look for one that's called Retrieve Model Annotations. I click on it, and there's my four, there's my angles I did before. If I want them all, I can select it and say, okay, I want to keep these. And there's my dimensions. And do the same thing for here, same thing for here. If you want to add your own dimension from this piece to this one, to this one, to this one. I don't know why I didn't do it all together. You have one here, and you can fill in the dimensions that you need. Do only dimensions that you did while modeling. Don't add extra for no point. If you have enough dimensions to build it, that's all you need. And then you do the same thing for there's the disk. I go new sheet again. Let's go back now and go add. What's the next piece after? Flange. Flange. Press OK. Revision 0 again. Go place view, base. My view looks okay. This one here I'm going to do a little bit different. I'm going to add a, a detail view for this. Okay? So we're going to go drag it over here. One view, two view, three view, four, right? Press OK. Or right click OK. And then again, now it's all the same view orientation. I go here, edit view, make it so it's not solid. If I want to change the scale, same concept, edit view, you can change the scale from here. You can add the labels for the names if it's left, right, center, and so forth. So we did this piece here. Now we're going to add what's called a, uh, where is it looking for? A detail view. Why? Because we have a detail here that we need. So we're going to go do detail, and we're going to click over here. See? It's going to add it. We're going to add the letter we want, the scale we want, and we're going to draw what we want it to take. So we grab here, click, and we're going to pull it out. If I want to have it a clean cut, if I want to have the jagged one as well, I can do it. It's going to be called A, my section, and my scale is one to one. I'm going to press here, and if you notice, I have my blow up I did of this piece. So it's you're always trying to make the detail bigger than the actual piece. We understand? So then you could annotate it over here. You could have also added a section view again to the other pieces. So again, you're going to do the rest on your own. I'm going to stop doing these one by one. You're going to annotate it. If the piece needs a section through it, you could do the same thing. Section. Grab this piece here. From the middle, we click, click, right click, continue. You choose the direction you want to go in, if this is the case, and I press OK. And I have a section of my piece as well, which for this piece here, you could add the detail view and a section for the flange. All right? You could add those ones for this. Then you have the key, which is simple, and you have the shaft, which is very simple. All right? And that was pretty much a project from the beginning to an end in Inventor. So thank you very much.